Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Crazy Heart, starring Jeff the Dude Man, Bridges, Maggie Gyllenhaal, and Colin Farrell, directed by Scott Cooper. Now, why am I doing him as a director? Well, he's coming up with a Guillermo del Toro produced film called Antlers that I'm personally excited for, but we'll see if it's good. I, But otherwise, after this... Uh, I don't know much about his other work, but let's get into this movie, because there's only one that I haven't seen besides Antlers, so here we go. We open the movie on the road as a faded country music, music musician named Bad Blake, played by Oscar winner Jeff the Dude Man Bridges, arrives at a bowling alley to perform a concert on stage later that night at the bowling alley, and as he can be an asshole, but in my opinion, he's... He's a relatable asshole, as he drinks a hell of a lot. And this is a terrific performance by Jeff the Dude Man Bridges. Nighttime comes as he shows up late for the concert at the bowling alley, completely drunk, while performing, he, and he sings great in this movie, as this Oscar-winning performance reminds me of how Joaquin Phoenix won the Best Actor Oscar for playing Johnny Cash in Walk the Line. While Bad is drunk, and throws up in the trash can while not performing the song I don't know for Beverly. And Bill, as Bill works at the store, he gave Bad a drink earlier in the film, and he sleeps with one of his fans and goes on the road again, like the Willie Nelson song, kind of funny. And the shots where Bad drives from place to place looks magnificent, as this movie is well made, and director Scott Cooper, maybe this may be your best movie in your entire filmography. I don't remember the other ones, even though I haven't seen one of them, from what I remembered from the other movies I've seen you made. Bad arrives in the other town and meets Wesley, as he asks for Bad for, to get his niece Jean Craddock, played by Maggie Gyllenhaal, to interview Bad, as she wants to be a writer and she interviews him, about his life and eventually their relationship grows and i do like them as characters bad sings at a bar while with gene's uncle wesley and meets a woman named ann as he sings a song for her once they get back on stage bad continues the interview with gene and their chemistry works great as she talks about her son named buddy who we the audience will meet later in the film and i'm really enjoying this movie Bad's agent tells him he's singing in front of 12,000 people somewhere in Arizona, but has to open for Tommy Sweet, played by Colin Farrell, whom the audience will see when he we get to those scenes. But for now, he performs a show and goes to his hotel room with Jean as they finish off the interview, and they start kissing, and she stays until the next morning, and he goes to her house to meet Buddy, and have breakfast until he leaves to go to Arizona to practice his songs for opening for Tommy. And after finishes finishing pra finishes practicing, Tommy gets goes to Bad's table to have a drink, and they all talk all about the good times from the past. As he says, Bad peach Tommy everything he teach Tommy everything he knew. I meant to say, my fault, as it wasn't his decision to sing together. But he will sing what Bad writes for him as he owes Bad. And Colin Farrell does a good, do a good job playing a country musician like Jeff Dude Man Bridges as they can both sing very well as they sing one of his so songs together. And they do a tremendous job singing and acting together. After Bad finishes the concert, Tommy sings one of his songs as Bad watches briefly. And I really like these scenes at the concert between them as it works great. Bad calls Jean to tell her he wants to visit her and, and her son, and I'm thinking these, scene, these are the best scenes in the whole movie. Bad falls asleep on the road and flips his car and goes to the hospital thanks to another man with a blue truck, and the doctor tells Brad Bad to stop drinking and smoking and lose 25 pounds, which makes sense for his age under the car accident. Jean picks up Bad at the hospital and writes a song while on her bed, which, kind of weird. And she cries for him because she doesn't want to see him hurt. And he calls his agent and tells him to write for Tommy. And if I were him, I would take that offer. But the shots are beautiful to look at at the end of the day.
Bad spends a lot of time with Jean and Buddy, and Bad confesses to her he was has an eight-year-old son who he hasn't seen him since age four, and their relationship grows on me, and as they're happy together, on and the next day, Bad and Buddy stay home together and go out to the park and arrive home at the same time as Jean, and as she gives him something sweet. And I really like the relationship with Buddy and them two as... Another day comes, and Bad drives to his house, writing some music, and visits a bar owner named Wayne, played by Robert Duvall, who's really good here, and it was a good scene as they act well together, and the shot at the bar is pretty damn good. Bad calls his son as, a, as he's an adult, as his mother died two years ago, and he's pissed after all these years he calls now, as his son Stephen doesn't want to talk to him. Which makes sense. I mean, I, I wouldn't if it were me, but that's different. Gene and Buddy calls him the next morning, and he suddenly vomits as Wayne comes in, and they go fishing together, and the fishing scene is tremendously shot, in my opinion. Gene comes by with Buddy to Bad's place to visit him while writing a song for Tommy at times as they go around to Houston to the aquarium. Meanwhile... Bad and Buddy go around Houston to explore while Bad has a brief drink and accidentally loses Buddy in the mall and involves Jean as she's upset with Bad and she leaves the for the airport. And I felt bad for Bad at this point as he'll never see Jean and her Buddy again. And that's good writing and filmmaking to show how much of a fuck up he is can be at times with the, all the alcohol. Bad is depressed and calls Wayne and tells him he wants to get sober, but he's heart because he's heartbroken and goes to a, get cured as he walks around in an outside forest and finishes up and gets sober and he feels much better and sings at Wayne's bar and goes back to Jean's place as he tells her how sorry he is and tells her to get he got sober and calls himself his original name, which is Otis. And unfortunately, she tells him she can't be a part of his life anymore. And finishes the song he wrote for Tommy. 16 months later, he performs bad song that's called Crazy Heart as he's hanging around outside and sees Jean as she wants to interview him and catch up as the climax is brilliantly acted and shot by director Scott Cooper as he does a tremendous job with this movie. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 8.1 out of 10. The performances by the actors are really brilliant, and director Scott Cooper does a tremendous job directing them in this movie. Jeff the Dude Man Bridges' performances, performance was tremendous, as it reminds me a lot of how Joaquin Phoenix won the Best Actor for Walk the Line. And the shots are absolutely beautiful. Jeff the Dude Man Bridges and Colin Farrell act and sing well together, and his chemistry with other actors are very well done. And this is a well-made movie, and maybe one of director Scott Cooper's best. Yet, I'll find out when I get with done with antlers. But I'll thank you guys for joining me, and I will be back next time with Out of the Furnace. And until then, thank you, Jeff the Dude Man.